Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and heard the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 9th of May. Jay Shankar meets his Moldavian counterpart Amir Diplomatic Festival. Operation Red Bani Fahim concludes after 40 hours in Kulgam, three terrorists eliminated. And Pakistan police baton charged people in POJK, several feared injured, section 144 imposed. And now for all the details. Amid India-Maldives strain ties, Indian External Affairs Minister S.A. Shankar on Thursday met his Moldavian counterpart Musa Zamir and emphasized that India's cooperation has enhanced the security and well-being of the island nation. Notably, it's the first ever visit of a Moldavian delegation after the pro-China leader Mohammad Muizu won the presidential election last year and called for withdrawal of Indian troops. Zamir is on a two-day official trip to India. Jay Shankar further said that India has been a keen provider of development assistance to Maldives and the Indian projects have directly benefited to the quality of lives in the island nation. He said India has also extended the financial support on favourable terms in the past to Maldives. The ties between both the countries strained after three Moldavian deputy ministers made derogatory remarks against India and Prime Minister Narendra Modi on social media. Meanwhile, India's Foreign Minister Reste Shankar defended the Agnipath recruitment scheme on Wednesday, which had abruptly halted the recruitment of Nepali nationals in the Indian Army. He explained the decision was made by prioritizing Indian interest. Jay Shankar, while interacting with students at an event, said India implemented the Agnipath scheme to reform its armed forces, keeping Indian interest in mind. Any reform, not just Agnipath, is an Indian decision and cannot be made because someone else's interest is at stake. India will decide what serves its best interest, he added. Why did we do Agnipath? We did it for ourselves. You know, we will reform our armed forces, obviously with Indian interests in mind. I mean, for it, any reform, I'm not talking now of Agnipath, an Indian decision cannot be made because somebody else's interest is at stake. India will decide on what is India's interest. In 2022, India changed its recruitment policy for non-officer positions in the armed forces by implementing the Agnipath scheme. This scheme allows youth to serve for four years. Following this change, Nepal, which had a tripartite agreement allowing its citizens to join the Indian and British armies, halted recruitment of Nepalese nationals in the Indian forces. Media reports suggest Kathmandu has stated the recruitment deadlock can only be resolved if New Delhi reverts to the older Gurkha recruitment process. And security forces concluded the Operation Redwani Payeen in Kulgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday, eliminating three terrorists in a 40-hour-long anti-terror operation. In a statement, Army's Shinar Corp said the joint operation was launched after receiving intelligence input about the presence of terrorists in the region on the night of May 6 and 7. The operation concluded after a relentless vigil of approximately 40 hours, eliminating three terrorists along with recovery of warlike stores, inflicting yet another hit on the terror ecosystem, the statement added. The slain terrorists included Basit Dar, a member of lashkar e taiba who was involved in more than 18 cases and carried a bounty of Rs 10 lakh. Meanwhile, security forces have also intensified search operations in Punch district to track the terrorists involved in the attack on the IAF convoy this past weekend. While an Air Force official identified as Corporal Vicky Pahare was killed in action, four other Air Force personnel got injured in the Saturday attack. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif once again denounced the May 9 riots on Thursday and said there can absolutely be no soft peddling of what happened last year. In a post on X, the Pakistani Premier said the violent riots not only attacked the national pride and honour but also assaulted the sanctity of Pakistan.
there can be no absolution for those who orchestrated, supported and assisted the attempt to damage the foundation of our nation. Love of our country demands nothing less, he said in a wheeled reference made in opposition party PTI. Following the arrest of former Premier and PTI leader Imran Khan in May last year, violent riots broke out in Pakistan with his supporters targeting government and military installations across the country. The violence led to a massive crackdown on Khan's PTI supporters with several members announcing their resignation from the political party. However, Khan on Wednesday said he would not tender an apology for May 9 riots. Notably, the military which has been in a loggerhead with Khan's PTI has ruled out dialogue with the parties unless its leadership tenders a public apology over the May 9 riots. Meanwhile, Pakistan police on Thursday baton charged people of Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir who were gathered to follow up their May 11 protests against skyrocketing inflation and load shedding. The recent attack has forced the angry protesters to prepone their protest to tomorrow. A report. A violent clash broke out between Pakistan police and people of Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir as the troops baton charged the protesters who were gathered to follow up their May 11 protest leaving several injured. The incident has forced the angry protesters to prove on their protest tomorrow. Pakistan police has imposed Section 144 in the region and has banned all the activities. Police has been deployed by Pakistan government to quell a protest in the region on May 11. Meanwhile, protesters also attacked Pakistan government officials in retaliation as they said they already issued stern warnings to the authorities against resorting to any violent measures against them. Protesters said they are tired of skyrocketing inflation, load shedding and accused the Pakistan government of exploiting their region's natural resources. People also took an oath earlier on their holy book Quran that they will fight against oppression till their last breath. May 10 protest won't be the first time that the people in POJK have to hit the streets to demand even their basic rights. They long accused that the political leadership of Pakistan is least bothered about their issues. डुडियाल के अंदर पूर्व तशदद वाकयात जो हुकूमत और इंतजामिया की तरफ से आज किए गए हैं उस हवाले से जो काल हमने 11 मई की दी हुई थी उसको रिवर्स करते हुए 10 मई की काल पूरे आजाद कश्मीर और बिलखसूस मुजफ्फराबाद के अंदर अनाउंस करने जा रहा हूं और कल पूरा आजाद कश्मीर मेरी मुराद आज रात 12 बजे से पूरा आजाद कश्मीर बिलखसूस मुजफ्फराबाद मुकम्मल पैया जाम और मुकम्मल शटर डाउन होगा a London-based human rights group in a report on Wednesday informed that Sri Lanka's security forces abducted men and women from the ethnic Tamil minority and tortured them in custody long after the end of the bloody civil war in the South Asian island nation. The 26-year civil war between separatist Tamil insurgents and government forces ended in 2009. Rights group accused both sides of abuses during the conflict in which 80,000 to 1 lakh people died according to United Nations estimates. The report cited details of 123 Tamils who said they were beaten, burnt, suffocated and sexually assaulted by Sri Lankan authorities between 2015 to 22. However, Sri Lankan government rejected the allegations of the report. A group of over 200 Hindu devotees from Pakistan's Sindh province concluded their 25-day pilgrimage to India this week, with around 20 of them submerging the ashes of their forefathers in the sacred Ganga River in Haridwar town. It's a belief in Hinduism that immersion of ashes in the Ganga River leads to liberation of the soul of the departed. Enabled by special visas, these Pakistani pilgrims associated with Shadani Darbar in Sindh also visited the holy towns of Prayagraj and Ayodhya. हमारी टोटल जो है 25 दिन की यात्रा है यात्रा थी पहले रायपुर गए थे बाद में अमरावती गए थे और फिर प्रयागराज फिर अयोध्या गए थे कल हम पहुंचे हरिद्वार अपने पिताश्री की अस्थियां अस्थियां लेके आया था आज वो जो है ना गंगा गंगा में वो गंगा गंगा में परवाई किए और 200 से 300 के बीच हर वर्ष ये यात्री आते हैं जहाँ की भी हम मांगते हैं वीजा वहाँ की मिलती है क्योंकि ये एक विश्वास की भी बात होती है और इस बार तो अयोध्या जी की भी वीजा मिली वह एक बड़ी ऐतिहासिक बात है
all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night and take care. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.